and welcome to season one, episode two of No One's Lounge. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and or good night, whatever time it may be and wherever you are in the world, from myself, no one and my beautiful friends. On today's panel we have Mr. Adrian Croissant, who is a creative expert. He does painting, he writes poetry, he does spoken word, he writes songs, and he plays music. We also have the fabulous and beautiful Muslona Laidlaw to my left here, who is a playwright, a screen and stage actress. You may find her familiar from the fantastic BBC soap, Doctors. We also have Ms Sandra Griffiths, who is the co-founder of two mental health organisations. And our guest act today is Mr Jack Goodall, another Birmingham musical badass. <laughs> On today's show, we will be discussing mental health, of course, but focusing on stigma and taboos. <clears throat> what is stigma? And what's a taboo? Well, st stigma is different from a taboo. I've never come to a conclusion on what taboo is, <laughs> I must admit. But stigma? Uh, stigma, that, that's, you know, partly discrimination. <laughs> it's a, a standard idea of what somebody should be based on, you know, whatever personality type they have. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Yeah. It's, for me, it's a, a prejudice mm -hmm. about someone characteristic or how they look um, <clears throat> it's, um, and you can have self-stigma <laughs> and you can have mm -hmm. stigma that other people exhibit towards you mm -hmm. so you can when you're experiencing stigma you you know often you are discriminated against yeah, yeah. you're denied something or you're made to feel less than Absolutely. Um, you don't feel able to, <laughs> yeah. or you're put in a box, and often that box limits your thinking about what you're able to do. I think for me, a taboo just means a subject which is hushed, or a subject that people feel uncomfortable talking about. Would you say it's anything more than that, more complex? I think it's a lot. I think it's a lot more complicated than that. A, a taboo. Uh, it's something that people are frightened to it's a fear as well, frightened to talk about or tackle something because they think it's a taboo. And I think that brings up lots of other things because actually uh, there's a lot of things that are taboo that need to be tackled but because of the fear of taboo it, they're not. Yeah. And mm. I think it brings up a lot of fear, just that word taboo brings up a lot of fear. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it feels like fear is a catalyst to both stigma yeah. and taboo. So mm. when we talk about mental health mm. i've got to think about mm. where did the stigma and taboos actually come from what's the history what's the origin why is misrepresentation still an issue i feel that it, it has gotten worse and i think it's gotten worse because people are frightened to talk about it yeah. because of the taboo of it yeah. people are frightened because it's not something that's physical that we can touch or look at so mm. people are frightened of the unknown <coughs> and also there's not enough information out there about mental health I don't think no. uh, in, in whatever level there is no information out there for young people for elders for teenagers for um, young kids there's, there's not enough I don't feel there's enough material that caters for specific age groups 25 years ago I don't think I would have got many people coming forward and willing to say yeah I've got a mental health problem yeah mm. 25 years later, 30 years later, I'd say people are willing to talk, some people are willing to talk more about their mental health problems. I'm not saying that, um, that, that everyone who's got a lived experience is comfortable with talking about oh. their mental health problems, because there is, as we said earlier, still taboo, there's still some stigma around talking about that, and part of the work that I'm doing with um, the two organisations that I run, uh, Catalyst for Change and uh, the Red Earth Collective, is to encourage people, often through events and using the arts, to encourage them to, to talk about mental health issues. Yeah. But more people are coming forward, and not just the usual Stephen Fry's and, and, and the David Harewood. <laughs> there are 
for want of a better word, everyday people are coming forward and saying, yeah, I've got a mental health problem and I'm willing to speak out about it. And yeah. our events encourage and attract people who are willing to talk about it. I think one of the big problems is that there's been loads of work done at policy level and government level about improving mental health services. Mm -hmm. um, so currently, the government are, are encouraging the, a review of the Mental Health Act. Yeah. Yeah, How many people on the ground know about that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? How many people on the ground know about that? How many people on the ground knew, know that uh, last year, West Midlands had a big mental health commission and launched a report to look at how mental health services can be delivered. So there's all this stuff going on at government level, but on the ground, do you know what I mean? People feel like actually they're not getting the right care at the right time in the right place. I did a project at the Birmingham Rep looking at mental health. Mm -hmm. And it, first of all, it started off with a project at a conference mm -hmm. and they asked me to write something for a conference mm -hmm. simply looking at. Um, because conferences can be about statistics and numbers, and actually, unless you feel something, yeah. then you don't connect with it. Absolutely. So the whole point of this project was um, that people at the conference connected and felt something. So I, I specific, it's a terrible thing, but I specifically wrote it to make them cry. Mm. It was specifically written to, to draw some emotion from them. Um, and it was about, and it started at the, the, the show went from the end, the show started at the end of a young, a young boy's um, being, it started when a young lad was being sanctioned and he was being picked up by the police, yeah, uh, yeah sanctioned yeah. and he was being picked up by the police and he was um, about to enter the mental health system. And it ended with him being born. Mm. So the play went back oh. and the whole point was that we looked and said, when could we have stopped this? Absolutely. At what point could we have stopped this from happening? Could we have done something here when he was with his teenage friends? Could we have looked at secondary school? Could we have looked at primary school? Where were the points that we could have stopped this? And it's, it ended with a mom giving birth to a baby and talking about all the dreams she had for this mm. little child. And you'd seen what happened. So the whole thing was just to get discussion. And it was great, it was great at the conference. And we put it together, then it got, somebody asked for it to be done, and I was really specific, I said I will do it again, but I think it needs to go to a mixed audience. So the police need to be there, mm. social workers need to be there, anybody connected with this story <laughs> need to be there. So actually people started talking to each other, and we're all talking off the same page, that we're not doing something here that does not connect over here, which does not connect over here. Um, and that went on at the rep, and the, the wonderful thing, there was a really mixed audience, and the wonderful thing, the police did come, the social work was there, and da 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 da. And it was wonderful, people standing up and saying, I've got a mental health issue, um, and I'm not sure w what to do or how to access it. And people looking at that person and go, oh my god, that person's like me. People aren't equipped necessarily mm -hmm. to receive the knowledge of which you communicate to them with, yeah. which could ultimately make your problem worse. And I like from what you were saying about how there was a pool of people from all walks of life, you know? Because when we're talking about the government people doing the policy, they perhaps have studied psychology, um, but not necessarily personally experienced yeah. psychology. And you do need people from every angle mm. for it to make sense. Yeah. And that's not happening enough. And I know personally, as somebody who's been institutionalized many a times, as somebody who does get support um, via community psychiatric nurses, I've experienced stigma, not just of the general public, oh. not just of perhaps family members because they were of a different generation and a different culture, but of the people that are in charge of my care. Yeah. Do you think there should be more training within Absolutely. The institutions? But they need to hear more from the horse's mouth. I, yeah. think. I think that's the problem. I think that, that actually... Um, uh, people who actually use the service going, this is this is what's wrong with it. <laughs> it's Absolutely. what's needed. And I know that people who are making these policies, it, it's fantastic, but sometimes the pe policy makers have no connection with what they're making policies about, and sometimes that's that's also a problem. Mm. Mm, yeah. um, oh, there's a couple of things there. I think, yeah, absolutely, that um, people who run services or whether it's staff, you know, kind of frontline staff or managers, they need to hear live and direct from people with a lived experience about what it's like. 
yeah. to be in a mental health facility, what, what it's like to be on the receiving end of their care or no, no care. Mm -hmm. They need to hear that. And then, you know, there's a couple of examples in Birmingham where that has happened mm -hmm. and is happening. So, for example, um, in 2015, there's a program called 300 Voices, which involved young black men who had an encounter uh, with police or uh, in mental health services, and that encounter was, was for some of them not a good encounter, yeah, yeah? Okay. for the reasons that you've described. Yeah. And the tra a training program was developed to bring together with those young black men and police and mental health professionals mm -hmm. to come together to hear the stories of what worked well, what yeah. didn't work so well and how could that be improved. So you don't think the health professionals could be trained how to empathise more? Yes, I do, and it happens. But I'm also saying that there are many people who lived experience who are wanting to take a more proactive stance mm -hmm. and, and deliver services themselves do peer support, for example. Peer support's a you know, big development uh, across the country where people with a lived experience are support, you know, supporting someone. You know, they can share their lived experience with someone you know, and say, well, this, is, you know, this might be helpful. Or just sometimes just being there, being really that listening ear. So I'm not saying that you can't... Of course you can train staff, and it happens, and it does make a difference. But I'm also saying there are other alternatives, there are other ways in which we can support people. I think with empathy it's a difficult yeah. one. It does make sense, yeah. but with empathy it's a difficult one because mm. that's actually a personality trait. Mm. So that, you know, yes you can fake, fake it to some degree, um, but it's more about how you are as a person and perhaps you're just not a sympathetic, empathetic person but you're in that industry. Well, I think then they should you know, be in it. I, I, <laughs> also, I also think that. Because I think but the reality you know, is, I'm telling you, people I know, I'm, I'm telling hearing you, I'm hearing that you. That there are a lot of them yeah. that are still in it. Yeah. Um, why? It's been unbeknownst to me and probably quite frankly unbeknownst to them. But, you know, they are. And in regards to... Um, you know, using your own experiences to help others, I think it's a fantastic idea, but it does take a lot of strength. And the whole point is, is when somebody is mentally unwell and extremely unwell, they don't have that strength. And to me, I look at that individual, that adult, that teenager, that elderly person, just as innocently as I would look at that baby you described in the story. Mm. You know, you do need to be picked up and lifted a little first. Yeah, and you do need to kind of really think about mm -hmm. are you ready for that, and what training do you need to you know to support someone else who's going through that. But there are a number of people that are, are doing that here in the West Midlands, um, and are doing it really well. Um, but I appreciate that not everyone is able to do that. I've been to events where people have spoken about how they um, specialise in women. I'm a woman, specialise in women from Afro Caribbean descent. I'm that person, but I can't say that any help's been offered to me specially. So where have I got lost in the rabbit hole? Like why, mm. if those services are available, why has it never come to me to help me? Yeah. And 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 I'm sure there's special stuff for men. And you know, they, I watched a program about teenagers the other day, and I think the younger generations have actually are probably slightly more clued up. And I think as time goes on. People might be therefore more clued up because they are the future. But we're in a bit of an awkward position at the moment mm. with who's in control and people's opinions because we haven't quite made that change. There's mm. online services. I mean, one of the things I you know, brought along today was this um, resource key which has been produced by Common Unity. And you can scan it on your phone um, and download the app and it lists all the mental health and wellbeing services across so uh, the West Midlands. Where would you get that from? Uh, exactly. So, and that's one of the challenges. <laughs> that's isn't the it? challenge. So, isn't it? Unless yeah. you go along to, you know, you're part of events like this, Absolutely. or you're at conferences. Um, but these are the sort of things yeah. I think yeah. should be in every GP's lounge that people yeah. could just Absolutely. pick up, yeah. and they should be at schools. Where teachers should have them. Where Absolutely. kids can just pick them up. And actually, and I think it's, it's adverts on TV. It, it, and all of that sort of stuff. It, it's a it's a funny thing having these these lovely things, but if nobody sees what's them, the point? What's with? the point? It, they're, they're fantastic, but what's the point if you can't access them? And I think it's that access of how do we get to a point where 
where we need to access things are here. Yeah. This is why Literally the responsibility here. of Absolutely. the professionals in the industry is so important yes. because, like you said, if you've gone to your doctor about depression or whatever, then the doctor should have this at hand. If you've been institutionalised, the nurses should have that at hand. If, you know, because not everybody goes to the festival. No. Not everybody goes to the conference. No. Some people are at home rocking and a recluse yes. with no yeah. one in their life. And this would be but absolutely invaluable. Yeah. Yes. But how do we get it. it to them? That's my biggest problem. It, it, it's, a, it's a great... I went to see a, a fantastic thing called... Um, it's Women Theatre. Women Theatre did this fantastic project about elders and about uh, how you look after elders. And it's about this fantastic woman, very, very fantastic, fell over and then went into hospital, couldn't get out of mm. hospital. Her mental health went down, her fitness went down, everything went wrong in her life. And her children trying to access mm. how to get support for her was a nightmare. But yeah. what was fantastic about it is that they did it at Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where all these people came yeah. who were supposed yeah. to be going off yeah. conferences and talk about this very issue, came to sit down. Now, there were only six people there when I went to see it, just six people. Mm. And one of these people, the people, one of the people who were there was the person who made the leaflet, and he sat and watched that, and he went, we have to go back and look at the leaflet. Yeah. We have to restructure the leaflet, because if general public can't understand it, then we've gone wrong. Yeah. We've made it for academics, and it's actually the general mm -hmm. public Absolutely. that needs mm -hmm. to yeah. feed on this. Mm. There was somebody who was just about to go into a, a meeting, looking at their policy, about getting the elders back home. Mm. And he went, I'm so glad I came here and not to that meeting because I've learned so much just sitting and watching this play than I would ever learn at sitting at a conference and looking at numbers. Mm. We can crusade and crusade. I'm not sure the best way to do it, but I think perhaps reaching out to the community, to schools, theatre and education, mm -hmm. community theatre, um, mm -hmm. poetry and what stuff. But it needs to be accessible because, like I said, some people can't leave the house, mm -hmm. so we might have a gig tomorrow and we've got someone doing a play, someone doing mm. poetry, someone doing music, mm. they're going to miss it. So it needs to be on our TVs, it needs to be on our radios, it needs to be in our magazines, and it needs to be no, fed to us by all of our support it, 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 networks. Yeah. Right, can you just tell us a little bit about your organisation? Yes, yeah, so there are two organisations that I'm involved with. Catalyst for Change, which is a West Midlands based organisation, we're here in Birmingham. We're focused on improving the, the mental health experience of African and Caribbean communities. We're going to be a focal point. So we're new, yeah, we're new. We have got uh, a website, we have got, uh, we're on Twitter, so if you... We'll, we'll start, add the links. We'll add the links. So um, our aim is to support organisations, individuals, businesses, anyone that wants to improve the mental health experience of African Caribbean people. So we'll provide training, we'll provide information. So if you go onto our website, you'll get lots of information about what's happening out there, what, where are the services. We'll provide training for people who want to deliver mental health services and improve how they deliver it. So that's Catalyst for Change. Yeah. The other organisation which um, Jade has been involved with, um, Red Earth Collective, we run a live event called Stereo Hype. Stereo Hype Festival, our next festival's in October, 27th of October, so this is the first time we've announced it, so 27th of October at the MAC. Um, that event has been running for about 14 years. I've been in Birmingham since 2013. We put on one day events, evening events. We involve artists who talk about their mental health experience. We have got our guest artist Jack Goodall today and he's going to sing a song which I would love you to introduce and perform. Okay, uh, this song is called Phenomenal Joe. Paranoia kept me where I am Lock the doors and run away my plans Every kind of addiction he tried kind of redemption for an afterlife I can't cope, can't cope with the day today I can't cope, can't cope with living this way Yeah. 
every single day you pick to the roadside Every lonely social ladder, ladder we climb I can't cope, can't cope with the day today can do because Jack hasn't actually revealed what it's about or who it's about but it's down to our own interpretation mm. Mm. and I'm sure you've got a bit of a buzz going on now because you've just used some energy and got yeah. it out there and like that's what I promote but again that's for another show mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to say um, if you are a bit scared or weary um, about mental health and mental illness do some research, Google is a great thing, you know, but perhaps not just look into books from famous psychologists or celebrities, perhaps look into more blogs from individuals who have actually personally experienced mental illness and hear it from the horse's mouth, as it were. Um, of course, when you watch this, you will see the links to all of my panel and my guest artist's information if you would like to look at more of what they do and um, that will be available to you and I'd just like to say thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank you. the end of No One's Loud season two. <laughs> Episode two. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>If any of the issues and topics raised in today's episode have affected you and your mentality or if you feel like you are in crisis and need somebody to communicate with, you can always, always call 999. If you feel like it's less of an emergency, there's always NHS Helpline, which is 111. There are also the options of two different charity support lines, one of which is The Samaritans, which is on 116123, The Samaritans, 116123, and that is a line open 24-7. If not, there is also the option of SANE, which is 0300 304 7000. That is SANE 0300 304 7000. Please, please, please don't suffer in silence.